What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about Viger, or maybe it's Vigor. I don't know if anyone really knows. It's a recent PC port to a formerly console exclusive game. And well, you can kind of tell. So Viger, it's been out for a little while now, and it is not a new game. Again, this game was originally released on console. I'm not 100% sure on how long it's been out. I had personally never even heard of the game until it was released for PC, another looter, shooter, extraction-based game. So I figured, hey, let's try it out. Now, there are things I like about the game. There are things I don't like about the game. And overall, I feel like this game falls into a very specific category of player. To start, it's pretty evident from the beginning that this game was originally designed and intended to be played on a console. Now, there's nothing wrong with the way the game looks, there is nothing wrong with the way the game runs, in my opinion. The game runs well, it's optimized well. Where it starts to fall short for me pretty quickly is the essence of the console mechanics that still exist in the PC version of the game, where everything is really just sort of a circular highlighted icon in the menu system that you point at click, equip, unequip, and that's really about as far as it goes. If you're looking for anything with any sort of depth, like Tarkov, Grey Zone, the list goes on, you're not going to find that here in this game. This game was very obviously intended to be played with the controller. Everything is very surface level as far as the menus and the customization of what you're doing. You highlight it, you hover over it, you click it, it's on, it's off, you get the idea. Now that's not to say that that system in its entirety is something that I disagree with or don't enjoy. Compared to games like Tarkov, Grey Zone, etc., it's nice to have a more simplified linear workflow when it comes to managing a game that's an extraction shooter, looter shooter, where there are usually multiple things that you're going to be having to manage at any given moment in the game, whether that's your hideout, whether that's your gear, your player, your health, your weapons, etc. Speaking of the hideout, the hideout works essentially the same way. There is a crafting system. It is very bare bones. You hover over an item. You either have the materials to upgrade that item based on what you've collected in game and you click craft. Doesn't really need to be any more complex than that, but it's not more complex than that. It could be, but it's not. Moving on from the menu system and the functionality of the game as far as the customization and depth goes, the game overall, to me, doesn't feel very deep. I don't know if there's supposed to be some sort of story or lore here that I'm just not aware of. I personally haven't invested enough time into the game to know or to figure that out. However, the game feels very shallow and very surface level. If you're looking for something to introduce you to the world of extraction-based shooters where you loot for items and get out before the radiation in this case kills you, then I would say this would be a very simple, straightforward, and easy game game to start with. However, it doesn't really go beyond that for me. There's no investment in risk reward, high tier loot, high tier areas. The objectives that are on the maps as far as comm stations and data links and crates and whatever all this is just doesn't hold the same value to me that it does in other games. Again, because this game was intended originally to be played on a console, I think that the overall value of what it could have brought to PC players is lacking and could have been expanded by adding more breadth and depth to these systems. I suppose you could say compared to Arena Breakout, which was a mobile game that was completely rebuilt for the PC. Another issue that I had with the game was that some of the maps just don't really seem fun to play on. There's only roughly seven players on the map at any given time, seven to 11, I believe. And sometimes the maps just don't lead themselves to any sort of high stakes engagements, high tier loot discoveries, interactive gameplay, and the like. To second, the lack of high stakes engagements, the engagements themselves are, in my opinion, 
as I've stated several times, fundamentally broken in how quickly you die in this game. Being that it is a third person game, everyone is well aware of what third person peeking is and means. Essentially, someone can sit behind any object, yourself included, if you see someone that doesn't see you and simply wait for them to approach you, pop out at the last second and kill you, which makes total sense, that's not new. However, in this game, if you do not see someone first and you begin to be shot, you will die. I would almost guarantee at every single encounter you come upon, there will be a half a second to react at most and you will die. I haven't played a game like this in quite some time, but was thoroughly frustrated at the overall lack of ability to react at incoming gunfire from a location that I did not know. Every single time that I got shot at from someone who I couldn't see, I died almost instantaneously every single time. This type of game that requires a little bit more time than your average arena shooter, having a mechanic like that or a system like that rather that caters toward a very quick time to kill took me nearly completely out of the experience of the game. The items that you loot around the map are a range of various items that usually have something to do with how you will craft your hideout, uh, potentially health items or gear upgrades but again it's a very point and click type game where the investment in those items their rarity uh, their specifications don't really feel at home with you as a player because it's just an icon that's highlighted on the screen and there's nothing really more to it than that there is a fairly complex menu system for crafting and gear the hideout etc i will give the game credit there but for players who are used to a pc based experience with the breadth of customization that that normally offers this game certainly falls short of that seeing as how it is obviously held very tightly and very closely to its console roots now all in all i don't think viger is a bad game vigor whatever it is i don't think it's a bad game I think it's a game that runs really well. I think it looks fine. I think overall it plays well. It's not an awful experience, which so many of us today are accustomed to in the first person or third person shooter space. However, I would say that this game really only serves, at least on PC, as an introduction to the mechanics, the gameplay loop of what an extraction looter shooter would be before advancing on to something else that a player could invest more of themselves in. I think the game would be far better served as well if there was more of an emphasis on co-op, which I do believe they are hopefully working on and willing to initiate because playing this game by yourself is just not fun. It doesn't feel engaging, the scale is off, the layout of the game and the movement of the game through the maps and what it is you're in there to do, which to be perfectly honest isn't always the most clear other than running around to set objects on the map to activate or deactivate them, open or close close them, etc., makes it just feel like a lackluster experience overall. We did recently live stream Viger though. I will put a card here on the channel that will link to that stream if you are interested in seeing the gameplay for yourself. The game is currently $19.99 on PC. It is supposed to be free to play at some point. If you do want to check out the game and play the game yourself, I would personally highly recommend you wait for it to go free to play. I would not pay for this game. I don't see any need to pay for the game. I don't feel there's enough of a personal investment to be had out of the game that merits paying for it. It's a console game that's been ported over to PC and that's abundant to me. It's not a bad game. It's a good introductory game but I don't really see the game taking off or going anywhere. If you're interested in a looter shooter, then obviously you have your mainstay, that being Tarkov, as well as two new games on the horizon that are being worked on, Grey Zone Warfare and Arena Breakout, which would provide a much more thrilling and engaging experience. Anyway, guys and gals, that's my take on Viger. It's not bad, it's not great, it just kind of is what it is. It was okay while I played it for the few hours that I did, but I wouldn't recommend the game to anyone, and I wouldn't recommend you pay for the game. If you want to play it, wait for it to go free to play. Again, I'll leave a card attached to the video of the live stream 
stream if you want to check out the video. If you enjoyed what I had to say here, throw a like on the video. If you disagree, then leave a comment down below telling me why. I would love to know what you think about the game. We stream three days a week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday here on YouTube as well as Twitch. I'll drop some information here in the video as well, highlighting that. Would love to have you be a part of the community. If you feel like subscribing or following, then that's even better. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.